Hi there, and thank you for joining me today. I'm going to do something different. I'm actually going to cover PeopleSoft Query Manager Speedy Tips. So I've been working with PS Query since 2014, and this is the first time I'm going to dedicate a separate part of um, my YouTube channel videos to that. And we're going to start with something called a combinational um, expression using partition and case. So what's a partition clause to start with? It divides the results of the query in partitions or groups. It is what is known as a window function, and it allows for the performance of calculations across sets of rows, resulting in a single output. This is the syntax, pretty basic. I provided an example using the aggregation of count. So what this is basically doing is it's um, counting the number of instances for a specific student or ample ID um, for all terms taken. Now the case statement, this is one of my favorite functions. It chooses from a, um, a single or, or even multiple conditions um, and it provides you with like a true or a false Boolean um, final result, choosing the, the first uh, variable that is set to true, basically. It's like a fancy if-then statement, if you have worked with those before. So the syntax um, of the combination of the two, the partition and the case statement, is like so. So again, I'm using two different aggregations, a count and a sum. And we're gonna dive a little deeper into this by actually going into our PS Query Manager environment. So I've created a pretty basic query here using just inner or standard joins, uh, where basically I am pulling student enrollment information. So if you take a look at the fields, we're looking at Empol ID, career, term of enrollment, subject catalog number, component of the class, and there is an expression here that I will explain to you in a minute what it does. Some pretty basic criteria. If you want to replicate the query as it is, you can just take a snapshot of the criteria here and also a snapshot of the tables and the aliases. So again, just looking at, for example, pretty basic you know, undergrads, um, who are registered or enrolled in a, in a specific class, in this case, all music majors or minors, um, who are admitted in a specific term or, or, or greater than this term, code 1700. Um, if I run the data, what we see here is a total of 80-something rows, and this consists of individual enrollment information, so all students taking all of their classes, and at this point we don't care whether or not they, you know, they, they pass them or they fail them, I just want a list of all classes taken with the components of each individual class. Now going to the expression, click on edit to view more details. What that last column is doing is it's setting a yes or a no value depending on whether or not the component of a class is set to MUS or applied music. This for me is a helper column it validates whether or not the condition within my um, future <laughs> combinational expression will be correct. So what is it that we're trying to solve here? We want to count the unique number of terms that each student has enrolled in a class with a component of MUS. To do this, we must first identify the unique student and then count the distinct or unique number of terms based on the condition that will capture only those classes with MUS as the component. How do we do this? We create an expression. So I'm going to work in increments here. See how I've created the expression as my helper column? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by entering that case statement again. All right. Now this time I'm not going to set the value being yes or no, but I am going to place the term value in there because it is this term 
that is going to be counted. I'm going to wrap this case statement in parentheses, and then I'm going to count the number of instances. So this, if you leave it by itself, it's basically going to count all terms for all students. And in order to group that or partition it by each individual student, you will need to fill out the remainder of the partition syntax. Partition it by student or FOID. Wrap it up. Choose your expression type. In this case, it's going to be a number. I'm going to set the length to four. I don't need decimal points because terms have to be a whole number. Click OK. Use it as field to display it. You can change the heading here if you want to. I'm going to click on edit really quickly. I'm going to say number of terms where I'm used is taken. Hit run. Oh, I'm missing a keyword here. It's a good thing that we're coming across areas because you might you might see this when you're um, writing your expression to start with. So go back to edit. So I'm missing something here. Let me think. So let me, let me look at the case statement. There is something missing. So with every case statement, rule of thumb is you need to end your case statement. So go ahead and enter that end right before the parentheses. Click OK, run it again. There we go. All right. So this first sample ID has a total of 52 rows of um, class enrollment data. Now, the musical components are at the top, a total of 13 classes, right? The number of terms taken, are they 13 though? I see duplications on my term codes, so that's wrong. Um, it looks like the terms are being double counted and I need to fix that. How do I fix this? I go back to expressions. I add a simple distinct text right in front of my case opening case statement inside the count aggregate function. Click OK, run it. Now, if you count them up individually, you do this, just use your eyes, really. It is a total of six unique terms where the component of MUS is attached to the class. And that, my friends, is how you use a combination um, expression using the partition clause with a case statement to count uniquely the number of a particular element, in this case, terms. Thank you for watching. Enjoy and happy querying.